before you start playing Dragon's Dogma 2, there are 10 things that we got to talk about. I want to make sure that once you start playing, you are starting in the best path. So today, let's dive into this video. Also, I just wanted to remind you that I have plenty of videos coming out on the first day of the release. So do expect those in your inbox. The first thing we're going to be talking about is the different quest lines that are going to be presentable in the game. I want to let you know that one, the quest lines are not markable and some are going to be markable. It's like a 50, 50 percent. Some of them, you're going to have to guess what you're going to be needing to do. But mainly the main quest lines, those do guide you along in somewhat of a form. But the ones that don't guide you are going to be the small quest lines. Now that we got that out of the way, just want to also let you know in regards to the quest lines, that quest lines could be missable just in case you are talking to an NPC or talking to a person and then all of a sudden they give you a quest line. But let's just put it like this. One of them dies or you can't find them anymore. And then you're going to be able to miss that quest line. If you progress through the missions too far, then you can't really do that anymore. So another thing that we're going to be talking about now that we're focusing on the quest lines is the different NPCs that you're going to come across. Some of the main NPCs could die. And if they do, then that is going to leave a big dent in the different missions that you're going to be able to do. So it's good to know that as you are going through the game, you're going to be able to find some wake stones. So if you have the ability to revive them, I would encourage you to go ahead and do that because that's going to come very handy. Now, what about the one save file in the game? There's going to be one save file that you're going to be able to use as you are progressing to the story the game will automatically save for you. You can also save if you want to, but have in mind, there's also one other thing in the game per the leaks have said that if you do click on starting from the in rest point, it takes away your save file and takes you back to where you rested the last time. So, it seems like we got to be careful when we hit save or how we hit save. But once the game releases, I can't go further into that. But have that in mind, it might cost you too much. Now, fast traveling points, as you probably have heard in Dragon's Dogma 2, fast traveling is going to be a pain in the sense that you're going to need fairy stones and you need to also unlock the different traveling points as you pro are progressing through the game so very important fairy stones are going to be super expensive to purchase so it's going to make you take the ox cart ox carts are very good form to fast travel in a limited form opposed to the fairy stones where if you have one section unlocked you can go from one fast traveling point in seconds to another one without any problems or engagement so that is something that we got to talk about too. Now, let's get into a little bit of the game mechanics and let's talk about one important thing. The first one is going to be about your health. In regards to it, I'm also going to be bringing another video that's going to go more in depth in combat abilities and combat um, mechanics of the game. But let's talk about the health. The health is very, in a way, punishing so as you are playing through the game you're going to come across enemies you're going to come across bosses and if you die your health bar is going to go down that once you go down your max health also goes down meaning that you could have a hundred but if you go down you're going to come back with 80 percent so that 20 percent you're never ever going to be able to recover it unless you go rest at a campsite or you go to a section that you're going to be able to let's just say rest at an end but that's going to also automatically bring in any enemies bring any like bosses that you have progressed through back to life so in other words be careful how you are going to manage 
your health. Don't go down. Don't go down. Have the pawns go down. It's a lot easier. Them go down than you go down. Once you go down, you're going to need the wake stones to be able to come back to life if you do have those. I also have a lot of videos coming your way showing you different ways on how to get wake stones in the game. And then we move on to the probably the worst thing in the game but at the same time it's something that you need to manage on your own and that is your stamina your stamina is going to be your number one friend your stamina without stamina you cannot go and fight at a full force if your stamina goes down the game will automatically make you rest so that means that you're going to be slow and if it comes to a point where you are fighting enemies and your stamina depletes you're going to be very vulnerable for about a few seconds which means you could be knocked down you could be killed and it's very important that you always are keeping that up to up really high now there's a lot of things in the game that i'm going to be bringing to you other videos that are going to show you how to keep up your stamina really high so you want to make sure you subscribe to the channel and i'll let you guys know in those videos now that we got that out of the way we got some mechanics out of the way we got the health the, also the stamina we have to think about when we f are fighting enemies each enemy is going to have one particular weak point and when they have weak points you got to know where is going to be the best place for the developers they have mentioned that the weak points of a bunch of the enemies are going to be the head right on the head sometimes some of the enemies will have a somewhat a location in their body that is going to pinpoint to their weak section so you gotta be on the lookout for that so if it's a dragon see where the points are sometimes the pawns will tell you where exactly go is going to be the weak point and those different enemies so have that in mind another advantage that you can have for the developers or i think different playthroughs that we've seen is that you are able to grab enemies if they're too big and knock them down so that's another thing that you need to do now what about the pawns how is it going to be i went on a full video that broke down what it's going to be your best pawn and your best a reason to be able to get so today i'm just going to go really quick about a little bit more about the pawns how it works what you got to do what have in mind now pawns are your key to staying alive in the game if you want to go solo then that's going to be your route but if you don't then you're going to have one your main pawn that is going to be your buddy you're going to is going to be your go-to person that you're going to be able to uh, come along with you it doesn't matter what happens in the game you're never going to lose them now the other two pawns yes there is a point that you're going to be able to lose them if you don't revive them on time so it's very important that you are always making sure that once they go down you pick them up if not you're going to lose them forever but don't worry where you can always recruit an another pawn but sometimes you get really happy whenever you find that pawn if you are able to lose that then it becomes more of a setback until you find another pawn there are pawns that are going to help you get around very easy through different quest lines some of them are going to help you collect different items some of them are going to be fighters some of them are going to be healers so it's very important on when you are playing what is the best pawn to choose for yourself i'm also going to be bringing another video tomorrow about what is the best pawn to get for your different playing styles and now the last thing which was the last video that i made it was about choosing the best class for yourself you got the fighter you have the archer the thief the mage those are your basic vocation then you go into your advanced vocations which are the warrior and the soldier then you have your magic archer your mystic spearhead in which i have a video on how you're going to be able to unlock that very early so make sure you subscribe to the channel you got the trickster and finally you got the warfare now all those different classes are going to be very op but not all of them are going to be to your own liking because everybody has a different playing style so as an example the fighter you already know his main weapon is going to be the sword and the shield archer is going to be the bow arrow thief is going to be a dagger and the staff a dagger and the mage is going to be the staff now i want to have you in mind these are only the starting ones so 
later on you're going to be able to unlock the other ones today we're just going to talk about your main vocation that you need to choose so which is going to be your best it depends if you are the type of player that likes to engage a lot i would recommend getting a fighter or a thief but on top of that make sure that your pawn is going to be a healer because you're going to go in you're going to be fighting a lot so you're going to want to make sure that a pawn that brings you back to life or tries to or brings your health back i'm sorry health back really quickly or helps you with the healing it's going to be very very important a fighter has a bigger uh, survivability where a thief has more of a mobility now if you were looking into high dps type of main character then you're looking at a archer archer is really good for high dps range for distance but it does have a very weak aoe it's not really good for close encounters now the best pawn for that is probably going to have to be a fighter because a archer is a healer as well so you may want to um, pair him up with a fighter i think that's the perfect two combination if you're going the thief way as a main one probably i would tell you choose a mage will be the probably the best way to go about it now if you're able to choose a mage and you want to go that round i would probably go as a fighter as a pawn you are a healer so you don't need to actually heal anyone else but if you want to have a good combination a, a mage as a main in a pawn as a fighter is the best thing have the fighter a pawn be more of a person that's going to take more of attention away from you so you are able to focus more on high and um, supporting him in trying to do all the different castings that you're going to need to do because all the castings take time and the more advanced that cast is going to be you definitely don't want to be dying too much the last tip that i want to provide you is that whenever you're starting the game you're not going to be locked too long for one particular class so if you don't like one class remember in dragon's dogma one they had those dcp points you're going to be able to need to earn those as you earn them they're going to help you to unlock different characters and i'll show you guys in another video on how to unlock them so fast and easy in the game thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn on notifications to almost see you guys on the next video